Better a thousand innocent men are locked up than one guilty man roam free. Hi everyone and welcome to Priority Holder and today we'll be playing Mono Red Gift Prison in the Timeless Format. So the prison elements we're playing are Chalice of the Void which on X equals 1 or sometimes even X equals 2 locks out a ton of decks in this format because everyone's trying to be lean and efficient. And our other sort of prison piece is Blood Moon and each of these cards can like end games by themselves like if the opponent's not prepared this can shut down their mana base. And the gift portion of this deck is God Pharaoh's Gift. So seven mana artifact that on our combat, we can exile a creature card from our graveyard and makes a 4-4 copy of it with haste. So it can rebuy ETB effects and just gives us like a free creature engine. Now, together with uh, Threefold Thunder Hulk, gives us some cards to tuck under Ugin's Labyrinth. And so if we tuck a colorless card, mana value seven under it, it turns into a soul land, so allows like turn one chalices, turn two blood moons and stuff like that. And yeah, not to mention Thunder Hulk is a good thing to bring back with God Pharaoh's Gift because it enters as a 4-4 four, four with three woman counters, creates seven one ones, attacks, creates seven more, and just gets really out of hand. So these cards also pair really nicely with Iron Crag Feet. So it's a ritual for four mana, boosts you up to seven, but only lets you cast one more spell. So this can let us get a God Pharaoh's Gift or a threefold Thunder Hulk out way early ahead of schedule and to sort of close out the game. Um, also need to shout out Fury, super strong card. Helps, like we have a sort of higher curve because we're playing around our Chalice of the Void. This allows us to like get back in the game, sweep things up. Not, not to mention it's like the best thing to bring back with God Pharaoh's Gift. So it just, just does a lot of work and it puts itself in the graveyard. It's just super nice. Now we have a lot of clunky cards in here. And so that's where things like Fable of the Mirror Breaker and FOMO come in. Helps just sort of smooth things out like too many junky cards we can pitch them or set up God Pharaoh's gifts. So anyway, let's jump into some games. This seems like a reasonable hand. I mean, we have like Blood Moon and Fury if things go like really horribly. Uh, the Thunder Hulk's looking a little rough right now, but we could pitch it to Fable, I guess. It's lame. So i um, going to keep that Shatter Skull in hand for the time being because we might need that to like pitch cast our Fury. We would like to keep our other spells probably. Alright, so let's see what the opponent has as a follow up. Alright, so they bolt in that land and just pass. Yeah, so double blue being held up, I mean, like, could easily be holding up a counter spell. Once again, going to hold on to that Shatter Skull for the time being. I have enough regular lands. Alright, Cycling Unearth. Alright, Swamp from the opponent, pass. Bone Crusher Giant. Well, if we did resolve Blood Moon right now, it would lock them out of blue. So, just gonna see if it resolves right now. Alright, so opponent's in Mana Drain. That's pretty rough because that's gonna give them a ton of mana to work with next turn, but like, just gotta force them to have answers. So let's see if they can effectively use all that mana though, that's the question. Alright, so they're gonna crack their fetch. Alright, so they're actually a Grixis deck. Okay, there's Faithless Looting from the opponent. And they pitch an Oculus. So now, now it makes sense, and they have another Unearth. So now it makes sense why they had that Unearth in there. So Abhorrent Oculus is a really cracked card. Like, it's just super, super strong. Not only is it a 3-mana 5-5 flyer, but it just makes 2-2s two on your opponent's upkeep. So now, now we're in for it. So And the opponent still has that... The scary two blue mana up, so um, I'm gonna attempt to do Fury plus Bone Crusher because Oculus is just that strong. We just we're gonna like immediately lose the game unless we kill it right now. So um, going to pitch cast a Fury. Very glad we held onto that Shatter Skull, and hopefully this resolves and we can just Bone Crusher it down. So let's see what happens. The opponent has another manager, so we just gifted them five mana though. They probably can't use all well I guess they have faithless looting in the graveyard so like anyway fortunately we have a backup fear but it's gonna basically consume our entire hand to do this so we have to pitch away our fable to take down now unfortunately we can deal dish out a total of six damage right here we need to take seven to kill both their creatures so I am, I'm gonna split it anyway but like I'm just agonizing right here over like how much damage I have to deal we have to we have to put at least three on the Oculus right now in order to kill it with Stomp. But man, it would've been nice to kill both those creatures. So 
Fury bites the dust. It also sucks to get rid of Fury like one turn before we could have maybe hard cast it. So let's see if the opponent could put the mana drain man mana to use. But at least Oculus is down for the time being. But the opponent flips a Tamio, and let's see what they do. So they're gonna go ahead and just fate this. So. I think that was a misplay. They should have attacked in and get the clue token right there. So that's a slight misplay by them, but they do have a Tamio Planeswalker now. So they're just gonna plus Tamio, see if they can. And okay, so they have another Tamio. They still could have had a clue right here. So um, not feeling amazing right here because uh, the opponent can just minus Tamio to like regrowth the uh, the unearth and bring back Oculus. So. That's what I'm expecting is gonna happen. So our, our options are Bone Crusher or Fable right now. And Bone Crusher like can attack through the Tamio blocker, but it seems like Fable has way more upside. Like we can start digging for some action right here. So that that's the idea is um, going for the longer term value right here. All right, so opponent's gonna surveil right here. And I'm just checking out the graveyard to know like what we're dealing with. And I'm shocked to see them plus on Tamio. So maybe they're just trying to march to the ultimate, which is also like super strong. We've been killed by just like Psychic Frog, Tamio ultimate before, so. All right, so opponent's cracking the clue. That makes me feel like, the fact they're using their mana on that makes me feel a little bit better. But we happen to draw an Iron Crag feat. So that, now, now I don't want to pitch the any of our cards because we can ritual out a Thunder Hulk right now. So you could see me hesitant, making sure that is the right play to do. So um, we are going to be able to attack Tamio, take one loyalty off because we get a little bit of a debuff, but hoping that this Iron Crag feat resolves, and it does. So we're going to slam threefold Thunder Hulk, and all of a sudden we've added a ton of stuff to the board. Now a Tamio plus is like devastating against our tokens, but they actually regrowth a uh, Lightning Bolt here. Once again, I, I really think the play for them was to unearth an Oculus, like, you know, last turn, or even this turn. All right, Sneaky Snacker. And Tamio's gonna make a clue. Now this is presumably a Shields Down moment for their flipped Tamio, so the one that's actually a Planeswalker because we have so many attackers. So Fable's gonna flip right here. We're having to wait for them to press priority because they have that clue token, so. Yeah, I, I don't know what they have. I'm just gonna send everything at the time. I wanna just make sure that thing dies because that's pretty scary. Now this is gonna allow them just to trade off a sneaky snacker for our goblin, which is sort of annoying. But I just really wanted to make sure that Tamio was dead. Like, Now, I'm going to chalice for one right here. The reason, like, we know two will stop, like, a bunch of their counter spells, but one is going to stop all their brainstorms, Faith the Slutings, Tamios, Bolts. So, one, I think, will be more devastating to them because they won't be able to flip their existing Tamio. Now, they could have, like, Sink into Stupor, bounce our Chalice, and then they're off to the races again. So, all right, so they're crashing into Tamio. Cracking their clue, love to see it. Like, hopefully we're stranding some cards in hand right now. And they pass to us. Now we have God Pharaoh's Gift. So we're getting close to that, which would be insanely good. But right now we're just gonna use Reflection on Bone Crusher and just smash them for a ton of damage right here if they have no answer. So this is gonna be an attack for 11 right here. Waiting to see if the opponent has anything. And that goes through, the opponent falls to two. And our Reflection Bone Crusher disappears. So they're gonna need something awesome right here to deal with all of our stuff. And and the opponent packs it in. So if you like seeing Tamio get Slamio'd, uh, please onslaught the like button and we're on to the next one. Wow, that, like, I think we should have lost that game had they just rebought Oculus right away. So anyway, we, we, we'll take it, but that was an awesome win against like uh, strong uh, multicolor deck. Patchwork Beastie. So I, I've been playing tons of Duskmorn Draft. So uh, happy to see that it's 
making some uh, waves and constructive also, at least at least somewhat. So, opponent has beast in the Inquisition us, take away our chalice. But we happen to thought seize bug our way into a second chalice. So feeling amazing about that, especially against the Loris deck. Like anytime you can keep a chalice in hand against Loris deck, you are super happy. Happier if you can keep two of them though, because then you're safe against their thought seizes and stuff. So going to get our mountain and very gleefully slam our chalice for one right here so all right so the point has a response though they're gonna crack their fetch probably gotta spew off their one mana spell while they can all right yeah there's a lightning bolt to our face point still does not have delirium yet but they, it's probably pretty trivial for them to hit it well, it's like a mill off the beastie and Let's see what they do. All right, so they're bringing Loris to hand. So, like, to me, that's, like, a sign of weakness. Bringing Loris this early means, like, we must have locked out, like, their entire hand. Like, they could still have, like, Bowmasters and stuff like that, but they, um, feel pretty good about that. So, we're going to use FOMO right here and discard an Iron Crag feat. Like, they can make, like, Thought Seize one of ours away, and then God Pharaoh's gift gets delayed, but, uh, really want to get on the board. Okay, so they did finally hit a Delirium, and they're going to crash in right here. So... We will need to, like, do something against them. Here comes Loris, but they can't buy anything back right here. Now, there is a Bowmasters they'll be able to get eventually. So it's pretty pressing to get rid of it. And they, you know, we have a face-up Fury, so, like, they, they must have some plan. But anyway, I'm just going to... So we, we do have Blood Moon. I'm actually... But they already have a Swamp, and it just doesn't seem like it's going to be that... That backbreaking right here to Blood Moon them. So I'm just going to use it as a pitch card to take down Loris. Uh, once again, one damage short to like killing both targets uh, would be so nice if we could deal five, but then it'd be already even better than it already is, and it's already pretty powerful. So we'll take taking down Loris though any day of the week. And we're definitely not black blocking the beastie, so we're just going to crash in for some damage here and then slam Fable. So we're hoping that we can draw a land next turn and like uh, Iron Crag feet out a God Pharaoh's Gift and just end the game by bringing back a Fury immediately. Be just like basically like instant win against them. All right, so the opponent is still milling, so they must have some like graveyard value stuff like Blood Gas or I, you know I don't know something like that. The opponent has their own FOMO, pitching a Dragon's Rage Channel. Love to see it. Opponent is crashing in for three. So like our life total is getting a little precarious right here. Bone Crusher. Um, definitely going to pitch it because it doesn't kill either of their three toughness things. Another Chalice. That's tough. Like, So you could see me, my timer burning up here because I'm trying to figure out what to do because the opponent <clears throat> is going to get sort of like the extra combat phase attack with FOMO. So I want to make sure they could just don't die next turn. But So I decided our best course of action is to suicide the Goblin Shaman token to get our fourth mana for the iron crag feet oh he's just going to easily eat it up right here now a post combat sorry second main phase post combat uh god pharaoh's gift is not going to do anything it needs to be you know there before combat but it will be in play for next turn now playing it exposes it to like Beseju, but keeping it in hand well i guess they can't cast thought seasons right now because of chalice so anyway i decided just to get it in play so the opponent is able to untap their beastie, and they're going to get an, a second combat right here. And they're going to send it with beastie again. And I'm trying to I decide, like, with our God Pharaoh's gift, like, it's going to be so strong that I want to just make sure we don't die to something stupid. So I just go ahead and chump the beastie right there because our engine is so powerful that we're just going to, like, crush them right here. So looking to make sure, but, like, it's pretty obvious that we want to get Fury right here. Like, it's going to be incredibly strong. So, going to start off with the Chalice for two to make sure... Like, just to clear out any Bowmasters they might have lingering in hand. Like, force them to play, and then we can eat them up with Fury right now. So, now we got them Chaliced for one and Chaliced for two. Here comes Fury. I'm actually going to kill the FOMO right here because that seems more dangerous and more likely to have some sort of surprise kill by, like, extra combat, some crazy shenanigans right here so 
Now we can attack them for like eight total double strike damage off the Fury, but I'm just gonna hold back because like I said, our engine is gonna take over. We just gotta make sure we don't die to some weird reason, but it seems unlikely. Like I think we've locked out all their spells and opponent packs it in. So awesome win against like Jund Delirium. I actually have some Delirium decks built. I have to test them and, and maybe make videos. So let me know if you're interested in, in Delirium decks. So. Uh, drawing a Blood Moon's pretty nice, though actually probably not nice against Mountain on the other side. We'll have to see though. All right, Blade, back Sliver. I, I'm a Sliver enjoyer also. In fact, I've I played them in Timeless before, so I'll link that video. So very happy to see another Sliver person. So usually your first instinct is like Bone Crusher down the Slivers before they get out of hand, but you probably want to save that for like the Sliver Lords anyway. So I'm just gonna play FOMO and try and get our third land right here because you could see like we're, we uh, need need a third land to deploy a lot of our stuff. Now if we get rid of the threefold Thunderfolk, we don't have anything to like ritual into with Iron Crag feet, but it did get us that third land. So I figured we could find something else. All right, so opponent misses a land drop. So that's, that's really tough for them. Um, we happen to barely get ours, but that's gonna allow us to like start snowballing right here now as as a sliver builder myself um they might be operating on a budget but i think you want to run as many rainbow lands as you can like um sliver hive cavern of souls the ones where you can choose a creature type and like anyway you can have like a like a tons of five color lands in there so like it may be budget constraints but like i tend to go super greedy on my like sliver mana bases Though they are more resilient against Blood Moon um, across the table right now. Um, but we're just going to ritual out a God Pharaoh's Gift and that's just going to like basically immediately end the game. You're going to get to see the, like, the threefold Thunder Hulk, Thunder Hulk combo that gets to put like 14 one ones into play right away. So we're doing pretty good for ourselves. And you know, this is like a lopsided win, but I figured I'd keep it in because you get to see like our deck really, really pop off right here. So the yeah, opponent packs it in. On to the next one. And, you know, love to see Chalice in hand. And if we do have some, we do have some really clunky cards. You know, we have so many like seven mana stuff. So like, that's why I like stuff like FOMO and Fable to like filter through like the awkward cards. And there's a FOMO right there. So that's pretty good. Elvish Mystic from the opponent. Um, Pretty strong. So the question is, do we like cycle Oliphant right here to get a land or to keep it to help pitch cast fury is is the question so all right so opponent just passes not quite sure what's going on right there with the Elv elvish mystic on the other side do end up cycling the fury and just going to attempt to chalice for one here like i don't it doesn't appear to be an elves deck but obviously they're playing some one mana spells so we'll see if we can get them with chalice and they mana drain us so I honestly was not expecting a an Elvish Mystic into a Mana Drain, but they they got us, so they they're gonna have a lot of mana right here. And let's see what happens. And then I see it assemble the team like, oh no, that's really bad. We're playing against Show and Tell. So, and they they find the namesake card. So so I'm trying to think. I, I think our best bet is God Pharaoh's Gift. That gives us some mileage against the tracks against Omniscience. We probably just lose right now. So. All right, so the opponent did hit an Atraxa. Now, the thing is, by, by letting us put a God Pharaoh's Gift in play, and they're not going to be able to kill us right now because they have, they have no more mana, we can actually kill Atraxa. Oh, let's see if they have... All right, so I thought a Thought Seize right there would have been brutal. Now, we can actually, like, completely annihilate them right here, and it feels good to do this to, like, show and tell decks. So... What we're going to do is we're going to just Blood Moon them. Notice they have no basics right now. So we're going to lock them out of all their colors except green off their mana dorks. Pitch cast Fury. So on the way down, we're going to deal um, some damage to Atraxa. And then God Pharaoh's Gift is going to bring it back again to, to get another Fury ETB. So I'm wanting to make sure I don't mess up this damage dealing. So I'm just going to deal the first four damage all to Atraxa. It's gonna die. God Pharaoh's Gift is gonna bring it back. 
we're gonna dish out four more damage. So we're gonna take down one elf and one Atraxa. So nuke those down. The opponent has taken a ton of damage off their mana, so we're just gonna ding them for eight damage right here. And they can only cast green spells right now. So uh, feeling pretty good about that reversal we're able to lay down on show and tell. So they play an Itherflex Reservoir, Birds of Paradise, but that's too little too late. We can just easily shred it with Bone Crusher and yeah, take down show and tell. So um, feel pretty happy about that. This is gonna be awesome. So finally gonna get to see Ugin's Labyrinth. Um, turn one Chalice feels pretty good. And that's why we're running this sort of gimmicky, you know, God Pharaoh's Gift, Thunder Hulk. Um, it's for those turn one chalices, turn two blood moons, you know. Now this this person may be unfamiliar with chalice. They, they, they send their Esper Sentinel right into it. Now if they had like a Cavern of Souls, that would have been clutch. But um, I'm just going to turn two blood moon right here and hope to just lock them out and just immediately end the game. So they, they good game is I'm like, alright, let's move on. Next game. But they, they have a basic, so... And then they have a next creature. So looking at their creature right here, um, it's a ninja that basically it's an alchemy card that if they hit us, it puts virus beetles copies into their hand. So um, I decided the, the best way to play against like a ninja strategy is to keep the board clear. We don't want them ninjutsuing in something really nasty off that. So that's why I opted for bone crusher right there. All right, so there's another ninja from them. All right. Um, could just play Bone Crusher. Honestly, it feels better to probably play a FOMO right here. Could just pitch the Thunder Hulk. And we have another FOMO. Now, the nice thing about FOMO is that if you're empty handed and play one, you discard a card and then draw a card. It, the, the card draw is not conditional upon discard for that. So, just something to pay attention to. Now, opponent actually just removed the Blood Moon. And once again, I'm, go I'm gonna operate on my strategy of keeping their board empty for like ninjutsu. And I like the odds that our deck has for like the game going longer. So I'm just gonna keep trading, keeping the board clear. Iron Crag Feet is a little little ways off. Though like if we had enough red sources, we could bring back the God Pharaoh's Gift and, and do that. But we're like pretty short right now. So I'm just, I'm just gonna get rid of it with the FOMO. And then I, th I play Bone Crusher here for mana efficiency. Honestly, I should just play the FOMO since we're empty handed and just drew a new card. Like, um, just in case we draw something next turn and it, it doesn't quite work out. So Spirited Companion from the other side. All right. And so, yeah, and so one, you know, here's, here's where we're getting burned by not just playing FOMO last turn. So trying to figure out what to do. Um, probably going to bring the God Pharaoh's gift to hand eventually. Okay, so that was pretty nice. Drew a fable. Now this now you're gonna get to see the strength of FOMO right here. So if we attack with bolt, it's gonna untap Bone Crusher. And the opponent's faced with a tough choice. Like this FOMO represents tons of damage because it gives you the extra combat and like lets you untap one thing. It's really crazy with Vigilance creatures. Might have to try that sometime, but we're just gonna run out Fabled. So the opponent has has an unpredictable deck right now. Like they could just slam like a Farewell right now and annihilate us. So like there is some merit to holding back Fable for like that kind of situation, but they go ahead and play opposite at Ghost Council. Now, I think this is actually a mistake by me to pitch the Pinnacle Month because we can actually play Pinnacle Monk. It does have a lot of targets to bring back, but it could have brought back an Iron Crag Feet and it could have brought um, the God Pharaoh's Gift to hand to get that going um, as soon as next turn, thanks to our Goblin being able to make treasure. So I actually think that was a mistake by me by not planning ahead to get that God Pharaoh's Gift. And the reason I'm taking my time for the attackers is that it gets a little complicated with FOMO because it's whenever it attacks for the first time. Anyway, I'm just making sure I don't mess up my like attack triggers. So now I am like suiciding creatures right into Obsidat right here, which 
not don't have a problem with because we're gonna be able to just like keep attacking because of the the FOMOs. So, so the opponent's trying to set up their blocks. Thinking about blocking Spirit of Companion, they decide not to. So they are gonna eat Bone Crusher. But with our next combat right here, they're not gonna be able to block anything without trading. And our other FOMO is gonna be able to untap the uh, the, the shaman. So and honestly it's almost like single-handedly generating enough treasures like this combat to help us cast uh god pharaoh's gift next turn so um i guess that makes it so that pitching the afrit earlier is not a bad i mean it, it all depended on how the opponent blocked but they blocked in such a way they're able to generate tons of treasures so um Holding up Labyrinth activation because we can just like slam a God Pharaoh's gift next turn. So let's see if the opponent has. I'm like bracing for impact, like hoping it's not like farewell. All right, it's Elish Nor Mother Machine. So they like, seem to have like an ETB sub theme going on with like Elish Norn, uh, Obsidat, and uh, Spirited Companion. But yeah, the opponent's just crashing with that. I'm assuming they're gonna exile it. Yeah, so they get like the extra ETBs, but the opponent is just mega dead here. So, I'm gonna do due diligence and like bring God Pharaoh's gift to hand. And once again, like in an incredibly good position right here. So, I'm just gonna accelerate through the rest because, like, like I said, I'm just playing it careful because I don't know if they have like a fog in hand or something. Like that. Anyway, I just want to make sure I get maximum value. Um, Elish Norn's gonna kill some of our ETBs, but we're just gonna like annihilate them through multiple combats right here. Yeah, the opponent's dead, so. All right, on to the next one. And a pretty good hand. Nothing to tuck under Labyrinth, but a lot of early plays, at least. No companion on the other side. Let's see what the opponent does. Turn one to fetch line, see if we're getting hit with discard. All right, and Wild Nakato. Okay, so playing against the domain deck. Just rip a Chalice of the Wood, which we know is going to be strong against them, but Nakato is about to outgrow our removal right here. Most likely, like if they play a fetch land and grow it to a 3-3. Three, three. So decide it's better just to cut it down now, and we could Chalice later on. So let's see what the opponent does. And they dash a Ragavan, which we are extremely happy to see. Normally you're not happy about this, but... Not only do they not hit, like there's nothing they really can hit off our deck for just one mana. Um, that means we, we're guaranteed locking something out with Chalice right here. So, um, it's not as mana efficient as like playing Fable, but we know we're going to like cause some damage right here. So put Chalice for one of the stack. Alright, so they're going to bolt in response. We're fine with that. But now we know there's at least one card that we've basically uh, made a dead card in their hand. Let's see what the opponent does. Territorial Kavu. So opponent is mana screwed over there. They're not able to like pick up their domain. So I'm trying to figure out what to do. Like if I should hold off, if I should like Fury right now, I decide just to play Fable because in all likelihood we'll be able to hard cast Fury next turn. And we just have to like fade a land from them to grow their Kavu for one more turn. Now that is a big ass because they're gonna get to rummage right here with the attack trigger. Ah, oh, stubborn denial. Okay, so we are we are really hurting them with our chalice. All right, so they did miss the land drop. Another chalice, we could completely shut the gate pretty soon on them. Bowmasters. So this is this is you know they're they're trying their best right here. And this, this is a heads up play from them. I like this. So they're, they're targeting one damage on our Shaman so that if we discard any cards, the extra Bowmaster triggers will kill it. So, but we actually have a pretty stacked hand anyway. So like we don't really need to discard. Um, so I am gonna attack in to get the uh, last mana we need to hard cast to Fury. And yeah, they're just gonna take it down with the Orc army. The opponent, opponent is just in a tough spot. like. They're, they're mana screwed, but we've exacerbated things by, by chalicing on one. Now, I, I do think through here, like, do I actually want to pitch cast Fury and then play, like, FOMO plus Chalice or FOMO plus Bone Crusher? Uh, decide, you know, like, 
Fury is just such an awesome threat. Just going to hard cast it and we'll have just a ton of action left over. So this is a, like a very beautiful Fury takedown right here. Just killing both their creatures. And we're just going to pass to them. Now it's getting increasingly dire for them on the other side. Alright, so they find on their land finally. Playing the Shoba Brawler. Pass. Fable flips. As long as, you know, if Fury sticks around, then it's just an absolute massacre with the reflections of Kikijiki. So, um, trying to decide what to do. I'm gonna just play a FOMO and pitch Chalice. Um, it is, it is definitely like still good, especially if you Chalice on two, but it, we're, we're so far ahead at this point, it doesn't feel like necessary. Now, I'm very surprised at this block because Fury has double strike. But it could be um, that they have like tribal flames and they're just trying to save life. I, I, I don't, I don't know what's going on. But and yeah, the opponent just packs. Yeah, so they, they were in a tough spot anyway. So all right, this hand now this this one's a somewhat borderline. We do have two of our lock pieces in hand with Chalice and Blood Moon, but like a lot of dead cards and obviously facing energy right now. The Loris version. Now here's the question is do we do we Oliphant turn one? So I originally like you see me do it like all the other games, but the reason I'm not going to do it here is because we have two Iron Crag feats and we can just ritual out an Oliphant. So Because we do have the third land with the Pinnacle Monk. Alright, so opponent bricks on their uh Amped Raptor and sending it with Guide of Souls. And once again, not going to cycle the Oliphant because we might need it as like a actual creature at some point. Now I, I believe that was that was a misplay by the opponent casting the Static Prison. Maybe they thought it would be like an energy ritual, but um, I think they could have had a third energy with the two from the Raptor and one off the Guide of Souls trigger to like have turned something into a flyer by now. So I think that was a small mistake by them. So, opponent brings Lurus to hand, which, like, like I said earlier, is, is usually a sign of weakness this early in the game. So we're just going to slam the Blood Moon and hopefully shut the door. So like now they can't cast Flage, Ocelot Pride, a Johnny. Like they could, they could have Bowmasters or more Amped Raptors or Goblin Bombardment. So bracing for impact. And they pass. I'm like, okay, so so now you could see why it was useful to hold on to that Oliphant. Because now we're going to Iron Craig feet out a 6 4. Waiting to see what happens. Now I decided, like, so there, it was an option to Chalice for two right there, but I wanted to, like, sort of stem the bleeding from, like, what was going on on the other side of the battlefield. Alright, so we've, we've locked them. Alright, so they. Now, now it seems like the time to chalice. So I'm gonna go ahead and chalice for two right here and force out any bowmasters that might be in their hand. So waiting, all right, so they didn't have any. So so we've chaliced for one and for two. So we've we've basically locked them because it is a Loris deck. So they're actually no flages they, in that deck. So. I'm just, I think long timers like, should I attack? I can kill them in three attacks with the solo Oliphant and it takes them much longer to kill me as the board stands. And you decide, you know what? I, I, I gotta just end this game right now. And it, we should really encounter like no resistance from them, like barring some crazy uh, non-permanent spell they have that can like deal with what we got going on. But it seems like we've we've locked them. Unless they get another, that's the thing is like they could play another Amped Raptor, get some more energy, and like, and then get around the color restrictions on Blood Moon that way. So like, Amped Raptor is their, oh, actually no, it's locked out by Chalice. But yeah, we basically got them right here. So gonna ritual out a Thunder Hulk, and yeah, the opponent, the opponent's seen enough. So feels good uh, locking up energy and making them suffer. So on to the next one. I've suffered at their hands enough with the crazy deck, so feels good. All right, turn one death right from the opponent. Feels amazing having two Furies in hand. Um, 
gonna play the Shatter Skull, though. I don't know, maybe I should have waited a bit longer since we have double fury. Like, just make sure we have plenty of pitch cards for it. Alright, so the opponent is gonna fetch and just let's see what they play. Just running out of bowmasters and going to ding us and attack in. Now, very unfortunate. I make a huge misplay right here. So obviously I'm going to Fury and kill all their stuff. So I'm going like about to do that, but I'm like, oh, wait a second, I could get more information by playing FOMO. So like, let's just do that first. And immediately, like right after I let it go, I'm like, oh, no, 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 there's Bowmasters, why? Because it's not optional, I couldn't opt out of it. So I've just given them a free Bowmasters trigger for no reason. And now Fury can't kill all three of their creatures. So that, that was just, just a horrible misplay. Like I should have just furied and then, you know, moved on from there. So that that was just playing thoughtlessly and like obviously we're still gonna be in like a good position. With them on all swamps, we're pitching Blood Moon right now. So um, so Fury's gonna take down Bowmasters and Deathrite, but it would've been much nicer to kill all of them, you know? So. So we'll have to see how much that comes back to bite us, but we're still feeling pretty decent about that exchange. So passing to the opponent. Let's see what happens. So they they could, you know, had zero creatures in play, but now they have a 2-2. Two -two. So Nightmare Snarrow is unfolding. They reanimate our Fury. They get to cut down our FOMO and just smack us for two. So already getting punished right now. Um, so Bone Crusher is not enough to take down Fury. It seems like too pressing to uh, to leave Fury out right now. So we're just gonna pitch cast our other Fury because Fu Fury kills us so fast, like with double strike and the fact they have another creature out. So just gonna pitch cast it's just damage control at this point like it's sort of un unraveling so I'm just gonna wait on the bone crusher giant like we could always do it on on their turn now they're playing bow masters first here because it boosts their army and so now I'm like well I can kill their army and like stay save the damage right now um, I decide, you know what, like, we have so much stuff like Fable and FOMO that can help us, like, dig through our deck that Bowmasters is pretty strong against us, so I, I, I decide to kill the Bowmasters here. Maybe, that might have been the wrong choice, because if we shot the Orc army, they would have just had two 1-1s in play that are summoning sick, and we could have played Bone Crusher and fended them off for a bit. Instead, we just take another hit right here, and... You could see how that, that one error of just like rushing into like playing the FOMO when it was a bad time do is sort of spiraling. We've taken so much damage off that creature that should have been dead back then. So opponent's gonna crack their fetch and let's see what they get. All right, so they go ahead and get their green source slash surveil land. Don't love that, that they're milling a one ring means that they must I guess either they desperately need to land or they have a really stacked hand. So, all right, they're gonna consuming corruption or bone crusher. So it dings them, but they're gonna gain plenty of life back. And we're just gonna tank another hit from this army. I'm gonna do a little, you know, desperation deck thinning right here. Uh, not feeling great. My opponent passes chalice. So I'm trying to get a re like obviously a chalice for two would be pretty decent. So I'm just gonna chalice for two. Oh no, sorry, chalice for one right here. Honestly, I maybe should have chalice for two to stop future bowmasters and like some of the removal spells. But like them ripping a reanimate is also really bad for us. So all right, fable. So that's why I was holding onto the land in case we drew like a fable or a fomo just to like. Be able to rummage so not out of this yet play fable and then pass and the opponent is going to attack in so i think for a while like if, if i want to chump 
and uh, just hope to find something good off Fable. But then, like, you know, it's more likely, like, that I'm going to need it to, like, double block their creature. But it just sucks going down to two. Like, it really, really sucks. So that that's why I thought so long and hard about it. Opponent just passes. Thunder Hulk. We need something better. So I'm going to pitch both those cards. All right, and then we draw FOMO. going to play the land first, because, like I said, you get to... Uh, draw empty-handed if if you play this card draw another oh man it would have been so nice to draw like anything right there so here's the situation i was talking about earlier so now we have the option of double blocking the army so obviously they're going to attack in we're going to double block and uh, i'm trying to think like what what do we need right here like we need like god pharaoh's gift we need something big something amazing my opponent passes to us arena of glory could help eventually just gonna send in with that so the opponent is not playing land so they, they must have all action in hand like I'm, I'm really confused about what's going on like I don't know if they have all expensive cards so all right so they cycle troll of cause of doom Let's see what they get with it. So it's just been a sort of frustrating game from on our side. All right, so the Witch's Cottage and put a Bowmasters on top. Not good when you're at two life and the right, opponent's going to grief us. So thankfully, that's just sort of a, a wasted card from them. And they can't scam it during like the using the typical ways because we have Chalice for one right now. So, all right, and they pass to us. So, I mean, we could we can handle one Bowmasters. We're gonna need something here. Pinnacle Monk. I'm trying to see if like there's an Iron Crag feat we can bring back. There's, there's not, but it's at least a creature. Pinnacle Monk is not at its best in here. It's just a. It's a pitch card for Fury and a thing to possibly bring back with God Pharaoh's gift. So, gonna just attack in with this and make a treasure. So if we ever do draw something, we have plenty of mana. A God Pharaoh's gift might be able to turn this around for us, but it's it's getting real dire. And like, once again, we know the opponent has a ton of action in hand because they haven't been playing lands. And unfortunately, that is it. So Shieldred is gonna kill us on our draw step. And it all came back to that one mistake earlier. That was a tough one. And we lose. Well, this deck is just super fun. Like, it, you could see how much anguish and misery we can cause with Blood Moon and Chalice of the Void. And like, this honestly is like a pretty decent strategy. Like, I feel like we're able to do pretty well despite it looking like really clunky. Like, there's just a lot of sort of free wins you can pick up by locking people out so uh, just awesome and you could see we're running like the sort of most blood moony basics i could find right here so there's some other there's a lot of things i was considering so I, I was thinking about this deck for some time and i initially had like party thrasher in the fomo spot but this stick like, just didn't seem to do a whole lot and like wasn't very great like it's just sort of like a not strict but like a basically huge upgrade by being able to play fomo right here just does like a lot more of what we're wanting to do was considering winter moon as like another you know because we could like turn one it off uh labyrinth but it's honestly I, I don't think it interferes with decks enough so i went with blood moon instead but i was considering that i don't think it's potent enough devour is like a classic for these kind of strategies you've seen me play it before but we just can't consistently get the color sources plus blood moon would shut them down anyway like you can run some waste but then you run up you mess up your red sources so i don't think it's quite at home here and you can possibly aspire even more if you especially since you're going sort of delirium me with like fomo they can try and dream a little bigger with emrakul um honestly the like a huge whammy with god pharaoh's gift is ulamog the defiler because you get a ton of counters on it and then you can uh, annihilate them instantly um i just went with a little more safe one because uh, the Thunder Hulk can be ritualed off Iron Crag feet, but I might try and build one someday that goes all in and just nuking people with Ulamog the Defiler because that's another way you can do it. Um, some other cards I can see, like Season's Pyromancer would be pretty sweet here, but like 
couldn't really figure out where where to put it in another thing like this is sort of like a lame version of fury like you can pay two to channel it deal two it, so like it's a damage dealer that it's like puts itself in the graveyard for god pharaoh's gift but honestly like you can see like it does not that hard to get stuff in your graveyard so like i don't think this is that necessary another one along those lines is trumpeting carnosaur so like you can ritual it out with iron crag feet to get the free discover and you can like uh, basically channel it to get in the graveyard for god pharaoh's gift so like this this is another one that I, I would love to get in there but like couldn't figure out how to put it in there might be able to put some more utility lands though they are going to get got by blood moons some of the time but, but yeah this deck is just it's really satisfying and like i want to keep tinkering with it because i really think there's something like i i think you might need more uh shatter skulls or pinnacle monks just to have like that much more stuff you can pitch for fury without like having to pitch like actual real cards and yeah um that's the deck thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it and if you want to see even more nonsense please consider subscribing and if you're already subscribed thank you for your support your engagement with the channel helps me know what the people want. Thank you.